Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little black subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that black subscribe button. Really does help our audience grow. Really does help our channel grow. Really does help and mean more than you could possibly know. So go ahead, hit that little black subscribe button. Also, thank you to our presenting sponsor, Betfred Sportsbook and the Betfred Sportsbook app. Bet 50 on any game. Get 250 in free bets. Thank you again to Betfred. Thank you again to you. Now, here is the video that you came here for. Over the last couple of weeks, and really even longer than that, but specifically the last couple of weeks, I can definitively say that I don't ever remember getting more questions on a specific topic than the current status of Hunter Dickens. The All-American from Michigan entered the transfer portal Final Four weekend And I'm just telling you, every time I open my phone, it's Twitter, it's Instagram, it's email, it's DMs, it's tweets, it's tags. Torres, what do you know about Hunter Dickinson? And so we haven't really talked about Hunter Dickinson in probably about a week to 10 days. He's taken a couple extra visits since we last discussed him. And I want to kind of just give an update on kind of what I know, what we all know, what the next steps are. And and, and basically, you know, we'll talk about where he may end up here. Because I will say the good thing is, if you're sitting on pins and needles trying to figure this out, we are getting close to the finish line. Like, I can definitively tell you that Hunter Dickinson took a visit to Villanova this weekend. It was his fifth visit, also visited Kansas, Kentucky, Maryland, and Georgetown. And so unless something surprising happens, that to me is probably his final visit. And he's actually got to make a decision here pretty soon. Um, college basketball is still in some ways an academic endeavor and most schools are going to want him to enroll on campus here in the next couple weeks. Most schools bring their players back right around Memorial day. We're about a month away. It's already, as you guys listen right now, it's May 1st. It's going to be May. No, it's not going to be May. It is May. You're here right now. And so I just bring it up to say like, we're getting to the home stretch and Hunter Dickinson has to make a commitment. So over the next couple of days, I would expect an update, maybe a decision date. Maybe he'll just drop his official decision here coming up. But I just bring it up because we're getting to the finish line. And so what I want to do now is just talk about what I have heard, what I know, what we might not know, and what kind of makes sense and what doesn't as far as the schools are concerned. Now, in terms of what I've heard about Hunter Dickinson and his recruitment, the one thing I can tell you is the message across schools seems pretty you know, pretty much the same. Okay. Um, what Hunter Dickinson, first of all, you know, there's a lot of talk about a player of his caliber in NIL. Listen, I get that NIL is a great, fun, fascinating, interesting topic. What's true. What's false. I always say it's so different than the pros because when Lamar Jackson signs a contract extension, you know, exactly how many years, how much money, how much is guaranteed, how much isn't in college. We have no idea. It's all sort of under the table. Nothing is above board. And so NIL fascinates us. But what I can tell you from the Hunter Dickinson perspective, but also most major recruitments, NIL is an important factor. I don't believe it's the only factor, though. Mostly, yes, you do. Let me be clear. You do have to have some kind of NIL plan in place for whatever recruit, a high school recruit, a transfer recruit, a transfer recruit the caliber of Hunter Dickinson. But that's just one factor in a recruitment. And for Hunter Dickinson, that's my understanding as well. Like, yeah, I do want to make some money. I'm allowed to do that in college now. But how are you going to use me? What's the system? Can I be featured? Who are my teammates going to be? Where are we at as a program in terms of are we a championship contender? Are we rebuilding? Where are we at? So I don't believe NIL is as big of a factor as everybody's making it out to be. It's important, but I don't think it's the only factor. And instead... To me, what I have been told by multiple people is that it's really going to come down to how does Hunter Dickinson see himself fitting in with your program, with his future teammates, with his coaching staff, how he'll be used. One thing I can tell you, Hunter Dickinson over the last two, three years has worked really hard on his three-point shot, shot 43% from the three-point line this year. And I'm not saying he's Steph Curry or Clay Thompson, but I do believe that he kind of wants to be in one of these new age offenses where he can show, hey, I'm not just a back to the basket center playing in the Big Ten, playing for Michigan. It was like kind of like, you know, I got to go plant my butt in the post and do whatever. I think he wants to show a little bit more than that. And so with that, let's talk about these schools, because I will say. His most recent visit to me 
is actually the most interesting visit of them all. And I'm not saying Villanova's a favorite. I'm not saying anything like that. But when you look at Villanova, a couple things stand out. One, if he does want to be in kind of a new age pro style offense, everybody cutting, moving, spacing, ball movement, um, you know, big guys are allowed to make plays. And I'm not saying that's what he should want, but I'm just saying that I, I know for a fact that is what he does want. Villanova feels like that spot, right? Like, like that is what Villanova does. They're great at, um, you know, they, they just, they, they play a very new age style of basketball. And so Villanova has that going for them. They have very obvious ties. I think everybody knows, but Justin Moore, 60 year player coming back to Villanova was part of their final four team two years ago. Uh, actually got injured in the NCAA tournament, came back in the middle of this year. But Justin Moore came back over the la- uh, over the end of the season this year. He's coming back next year for college basketball. And he's a former high school teammate, Hunter Dickinson. And I can't say I know their relationship perfectly well, but what I can tell you is um, my understanding is they, they're, they're, they're close. And that's a factor, and that's something Hunter Dickinson is going to consider. Finally, and this is something that you need to pay attention to because this – is an important piece of information that I think could be easy to be overlooked, but it shouldn't be in the grand scheme of things. A lot of people would probably sit there and say, okay, Villanova, we get it, great program, but small Catholic school, Big East, it's not an SEC, it's not a Big Ten, it's not a Big 12, it's not a power conference program with power conference money, football money, whatever. So can they compete in the NIL space? One, I don't know if it's the be-all, end-all for Hunter Dickinson, but two, this is something that I think is worth noting. About two, two and a half weeks ago, they hired a guy named Baker Dunleavy, who had been an assistant there, was the head coach at Quinnipiac, a small school in Connecticut, and he came back to Villanova to essentially be their GM, to basically run their NIL department. And this is something we actually talked about about a year ago. Duke hired somebody who they called the GM. Her name was Rachel Baker. And she was basically in charge of like, you're the NIL person. When John Shire goes into a room, he wants to have an NIL plan in place. And as time has gone on, more and more schools have kind of hired somebody in that role. I know for a fact, UConn is looking to hire somebody in that role. I think they actually might have somebody in mind. I won't say it. It's not my business to share. But Villanova hired a GM to basically fundraise and oversee NIL in the last couple of weeks. So I don't know if he's working the phones overtime to get money in place to get Hunter Dickinson, but I don't think if it comes down to NIL, they'll be outbid. Villanova to me is very interesting. Villanova to me, I think, is at least a factor that has to be considered. The other schools, Kansas, but prior to Villanova was the most recent visit. And I'll tell you, you know, a lot of people in the industry think Kansas is the favorite. I don't know that anybody is the favorite right now. I'm not even sure Hunter Dickinson knows, but they sure do offer a lot, okay? First of all, in terms of teams that are built right now to compete at the highest level, I think Kansas is right there. Kansas has done a really good job this spring and summer of revamping their roster. Added two transfer portal kids in the last probably 10 or so days. Nick Timberlake was a really good guard. Towson University. Many people thought he was a UConn lock. Ended up going to Kansas. Arterio Morris, who began his career at Texas, former McDonald's All-American. He committed to Kansas in the last couple days. That's on top of Dewan Harris, a returnee from last year. KJ Adams, a returnee from last year. The one thing Kansas really does not have, though, is that true big man down low that can just get you buckets. Now, again, it comes down to role. How will he be used? Is he only going to be a back-to-the-basket guy? I don't think that's what he's looking for. But when you start talking about programs that you can come in and be a missing piece, and oh, by the way, you could potentially win a national championship, Kansas is a pretty good spot, and it is worth noting very quickly, by the way, Kansas might not be done. Mackenzie Mbako, that five-star kid who was committed to Duke, we'll talk about him in a minute as it pertains to Ron Holland, but Mackenzie Mbako was a kid that that actually announced a a, a visit schedule, and he's going to go visit Kansas. So he's going to visit Louisville, St. John's, which he visited this weekend. Big Rick energy, baby. Uh, Louisville, St. John's, Indiana, and Kansas. So Kansas is really ramping up late in the summer here, late in the spring, but have added two transfer guards. You add Hunter Dickinson. We're now talking about a potential number one team in the country, one of the favorites going into next year. Kentucky, we've talked a lot about the Hunter Dickinson, Kentucky stuff. 
Oscar Shibway at this point, I don't think you can expect to come back. Hunter Dickinson said it. Um, it's not basically he said, like, it's not my business to talk about other people's business, but I wouldn't be visiting Kentucky if I thought Oscar Shibway was coming back. So visit went well there. It's a lot of the same, right? Is how do I fit with the pieces? How will you use me? How will I be used? I think something that is in the Kentucky kind of uh, holster, if you will, Oscar Sheboy made a ton of money playing college basketball this past year. Um, you know, again, there's no official numbers, but Oscar Sheboy was probably the highest paid player in college basketball this year. And if you're trying to sell a kid on like, look, we know it's not only about NIL, but you can make great money here and you can do it. By the way, as an American citizen, there's no hiccups. There's no holdups. We have great opportunities. That's tough not to sell. Uh, and it's not to take advantage of from the Maryland Georgetown perspective. Nothing has changed, right? Maryland home state school missing piece. They actually have a lot of good guards coming back. Georgetown be the face of Ed Cooley's rebuild. I think the thing you run into with Georgetown, you're going to transfer from Michigan to go play in year one rebuild younger team, probably not as much talent as you need to compete at the highest level. By the way, I would say this too, from the Kentucky perspective, that's an interesting part for me. You're Hunter Dickinson. You're a grown man, probably 22 or so years old. Do you want to go play with a bunch of 19-year-old freshmen? I don't know. They're talented freshmen, but is that what you want to do? So I bring it all up to say this thing's coming down the home stretch. And like I said, a, a couple of things stand out. One, I think we're going to start to get some clarification soon. Hunter Dickinson's second time being recruited. Don't know if he's going to do the whole, you know, here's my final five and here's my announcement date and this is how we're going to do it. He might could also see the scenario where he doesn't. Um, but beyond that, I, I think we're going to start to get some clarification on, on when he commits. And I think we're going to start to get an understanding of what he's looking for in a timeline. Cause I think it's coming soon. If I had to take a guess, I'd still probably say Kansas. I just think if you're a veteran guy, do you really want to go to a rebuild like Georgetown or a place like, uh, you know, like Kentucky with a bunch of young guys, that part, I don't know but it's going to be fascinating to watch it unfold. But this thing is finally coming down to the wire.